Troubleshooting in the world of IT takes a lot of different aspects to be really good. You have to have a methodology. You have to be well-versed in the tools that allow you to diagnose so that you can see the symptoms, you can drill into them. And sometimes you're going to be seeing things that you haven't been prepared for, right? And I think that's where ChatGPT can be particularly useful when you're seeing something that you don't have exposure to. And that's just one of the things that is going to be a reality for us is the world is constantly changing. The, uh, the, the applications might be thrown out an error code that we have never seen before. We're seeing different kind of behavior. So let's get a sense of how this can be used. And I'm actually going to be pulling from troubleshooting experiences that I've had firsthand and occasionally teach to as well and see how this tool performs with respect. Sometimes it's going to nail it. Sometimes it's going to be very clear. And sometimes it's going to be a miss. But with a few seconds invested, you can see if you're going to get artificial intelligence help for the challenge that is facing you. And I think that's that's pretty useful. Uh, so let's say we're doing something and we're looking at an IP address that's, we do an IP config, we see 169.254. So I'm seeing, seeing 169.254 addresses on my Windows posts when I do IP config. So why might this be? So, okay, right, that's a PIPA, automatic private IP addresses. It's telling us you're probably not going to get this from DHCP. And it actually tells us that we may not have reachability to a DHCP server. That really is what it's about. May indicate a problem with the DHCP server. That's a classic, classic case. All right, so that's kind of a, just a sanity check. That's uh, a, a common thing that IT individuals are trained to, to look for if they're troubleshooting a Windows client. It's just weird behavior. Something that I was running into recently is a uh, flapping MAC address on a Catalyst switch. So this is a much more obscure platform. I mean, Windows is uh, the predominant operating system. Catalyst switches or Cisco switches. Uh, and uh, and that's, that's a narrower set. How well is that going to be documented? Well, let's give that a try. Why? Am I seeing flapping MAC addresses in the log files for my Catalyst? I'll say Cisco Catalyst switches. Let's we'll see how we do here. Flapping MAC addresses can occur when we have the same MAC address coming in on multiple ports. Absolutely the classic case. Usually what I'm looking for in this case is, uh, is there a loop in the topology? Usually it's a loop in the topology that spanning tree protocol has not caught. And lo and behold, it does mention spanning tree protocol. And I've seen some equipment, namely Sonos speakers, not do a good job with spanning tree protocol. And sometimes these little problems, these occult problems uh, occur and it's, it's tricky to, to get some clues as to where to go next. 
okay? And so this would give you some clues on where to go next. Uh, something else. Let's say I'm troubleshooting someone's Outlook. They've got Outlook, Outlook desktop application, and they're getting an out of memory error. And you look at Task Manager, you see, you know, it doesn't look like the, the whole system is out of memory, but Outlook is telling me out of, I'm out of memory. Why is Outlook telling me that my, it is out of memory? And this is one of those things where you can do a Google search and you can read discussions. But in the case that we saw most recently, it was with a really large PST file. And so let's see if that's one of the things um, that is there. So close other programs, remove any unnecessary attachments, disable add-ins, increase virtual memory. Hmm, no. Uh, none of those are the issue. Would there be anything else going on? Let's see how it <laughs> so I didn't get anything about a PST file. But look at that. Archiving old emails. It even tells us what we can do about it. Now, some people get a lot of emails and they don't clean it up. So that's the sort of thing that... Uh, that you might have burned a few hours researching and uh, been sent on a lot of wild goose chases. Uh, one more, just a classic issue. I'm seeing late collisions or some other error uh, on your platform. And this is an example where uh, it's, it's probably an Ethernet environment. I'm seeing late collisions in the show interface output for a Cisco router. What can it be the cause? Okay. I don't even have to use good punctuation mark. There's no question mark at the end. So late collisions are one of these things that we used to have a lot in IT when we had hubs and half duplex. And I've had to teach to the, some of the other kind of strange examples in one of my classes. Cable length is kind of a, an unusual one, but duplex mismatch is absolutely what I'm looking for. You might also use this to document your knowledge base, right? Let's say, you are uh, uh, upper, maybe you're a team lead for your group and you have someone say, hey, I just ran into this. What's the deal? And you're like, okay, do X, Y, Z. But you always wanna be training the individuals on your team, sharing that knowledge. And you might go, you know what? I can build a really quick explanation for my team members. So they understand, hey, if you see this, here's what to do. And you can look it over. You can say, you know what? That's that's not exactly what I want. I'm going to prune out a few of these things, but I can send that up and a nice buttoned up response to that team member can say, OK, now I understand duplex mismatch is the most likely cause in my environment for observation of that error or whatever it is that you're observing. You have those things that you've seen two, three, a hundred times, but that's potentially because you have far more experience with that. You can use 
good documentation, sharing that with some of your team members to build your knowledge base so that you can continue to elevate the response times and the efficiency for your team. It's always, always a good thing.